Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys. They say the devil's in the details. Well, in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to improve your wildlife photography by focusing on the details right after this. You know, often it's it's hard to choose how we're going to edit an image or sometimes even just how to pick an image as we're culling through, you know, hundreds of files. Which one do I select? And part of the advice I give to all of the people that, that ask for advice around this topic is look at the frames and try to find those, those unique elements, those little things that separate it from everything else. And then as you're looking through that frame, how do you accentuate the best parts of that? And often the best parts could be something very, very small. It may not be the subject. It could be the background or the foreground or some little element that, that's part of that photo that you really want to accentuate. And today I'm going to try to show you a couple real life examples. And I'm going to focus on one of the images that I took earlier this year where I really felt like I captured something pretty interesting. And I did that by focusing on one specific element of that image. I'm going to be showing you some images from my Patreon community. Uh, these were images that were just submitted to me. Now, you can critique my images all you want. All I ask is that with my Patreon images, uh, these are people that are in the learning process still, some of them very advanced, um, and I enjoy working with them. I'm just going to ask down in the comments not to critique any of their images. Certainly, if you want to critique any of mine, feel free. Now, this is an image uh, sent to me by Brian Feller. The uh, detail here is just those tail feathers, and often with backlit images, you'll get some of this rim light or show through. And this show through light actually just highlights those, those tail feathers. I thought he did a really nice job with that one. This image by Mark Troxel, the detail being that water flow and knowing the edit uh, behind this did a really nice job accentuating that using some dodging and burning. Also love the soft light here. Now I'm gonna show you a few of my images where I just felt, and, and I, I had this series put together toward March, April, where I was finishing up my waterfowl for the year. And I went through and just tried to find a couple images where I accentuated or chose the frame based off of detail. Now, this one's pretty easy. As I'm calling, I just find that one little thing that has interest. Not a lot to edit with this one, but let's look at this one. Now, in this one, the breath wasn't super obvious at first. So through editing, I just tried to really enhance that. So taking that detail, looking at the image saying boy what separates this what makes this one really special without the breath i think it's a solid photo it's good with the breath it's really special so i want to play that up and again i'm doing that through some editing techniques techniques i do that over on patreon i don't do a whole lot of the editing here on youtube so i try to give out a lot of free content on youtube if you're interested in the editing side join me over on patreon i think you'll find that a really good value now i'm going to show you one more where again the detail is pretty obvious not a lot to accentuate, but I just want to make sure I have it cropped right to make it visible. Sometimes keeping things smaller in frame can help with that, and sometimes tightening up the compositions can help. When you've got a detail like a water droplet or feather details, I often say a really good tip is go ahead and crop it down a little bit. Now, you will find on my channel, I very rarely talk about cropping harder or deeper or making it a tighter composition. I tend to enjoy looser compositions showing a little bit of the habitat. However, when we're dealing with really interesting feathers, water, little specks, little flicks of light, sometimes it does make sense to crop down a little bit tighter. So with this image, I cropped it a little tighter than I normally would because I wanted to accentuate that water detail. I'm going to show you one more image. This is not my image. Uh, this one feels a little moody. It's a little dark, and that's intentional. Uh, this is by John Davis, a terrific photographer. I actually thought this was a goshawk. Uh, it turns out this is a Cooper's hawk that is doing a goshawk uh, Im imitation. One of the things about this image that I really, really liked was just the detail in the droplets of water. And when I looked at the raw file, it looked a little different. John took a lot of liberties with this in terms of creating a mood that was dark, and then he made the accents to these raindrops. I actually went back and accented them a little bit more for this video and gave him that suggestion. When you've got a really interesting feature like that, those raindrops sometimes gets a, get a little washed out. So going back in and, and carefully dodging, and there's a lot of ways to do that, but carefully brightening uh, even just a select few of those raindrops is a really interesting tip. I'm gonna show you three more Patreon images really quick. And this time you get to see the raw file first. Here we've got a Canada goose. Not the most interesting subject in the world, pretty common, 
But again, watch the breath. And in the edit, I thought they did a really nice job. And this is Jocelyn Anderson. Did a really nice job accentuating that. Look at the difference here where it's visible but not obvious. And then the edit brings in some contrast, brings in a little dodging, and now look how much that stands out. This next image by uh, Chris, Crystal Migliori is, is pretty curious. It doesn't appear to have a whole lot going on. I want you to pay attention to the edit. And this is one of those things, as you're looking through and you're calling your files, when you see that detail, sometimes you can make something out of it. I loved what she did with this. Watch her go dark and moody. And then just the two little feathers, I assume this is a fledgling, which got those young feathers just kind of popping off the head. Very interesting thing about this, and I'll pop back, you'll see it a little bit better here. The bird's not even turned towards you. Now, a lot of people are going to just say, well, I wouldn't post it. And I'm not telling you what to do with your images. I will tell you, I found this edit to be very, very interesting even though the bird wasn't facing me. It's not something I've seen a lot of, and sometimes having a unique image really makes you stand out from everybody else. So good job, Crystal. I actually liked kind of taking an image that a lot of people, quite honestly, would probably not have bothered to edit because the bird wasn't facing them. She took a creative approach to this and really accentuated those little feathers, those little white feathers. Now I'm going to show you another one. Now this one's by Barb Ward. You look at this at first and you say, well, I don't see a whole lot of potential here. But she saw some potential in the details. And the detail here was the way the sun was hitting those, the mane of the horse and catching some of that eye, some of that side light. And in her edit, I thought she did a wonderful job cropping in tight to get the detail. A great example of this. Cropping in tight to get the detail. Still plenty of resolution. One of the great things about these high resolution cameras that we have now is that you get to crop down a little bit. So you can crop, well, quite honestly, you can crop down a lot. I mean, I thought this was really, really well done. What a difference. Again, an image you may look at and say, I don't see a whole lot here. The light's not terrific. The background's not great. But there's an element here, a detail here that works. And with the edit, cropping it down, removing the distractions, focusing on the eye, nice composition. Boy, I think that really works. Now, let me tell you, about this next series, and we're going to finish on this last series, and this is going to be uh, my personal image, and this is the one that started this whole concept. I did a Patreon video around this image where I explained it. I showed in the field what it looked like and what I was thinking. I was shooting wood ducks. Now, this first image is not going to be super impressive. A lot of you are going to look at this and say, I don't know where you're going with this one, Scott. I don't see much here. This is the, the beginning of this series. I took probably 100 photos. Uh, this is the first duck that passes through. There's two ducks here. I'm low angle. They sneak up from the side. I don't even see them until this one gets to about here. This is one of the first frames that I took. I didn't see a lot of potential as I was there, honestly. But as it moved over and the second duck came through, I started to notice something. The water was really calm. As they moved toward the backlit sun, so the sun is rising behind them, the colors picked up. And because the water was nice and calm, there was this beautiful wake that was being created by the duck. Now, this is not an edited file. Okay, so notice the difference in, in warmth and, and really nice color. Now, for me, this is starting to work. So now I'm starting to get excited. I'm like, wow, these colors are starting to pop. And I noticed this wake in front of the bird. And that's the detail, the wake and that little droplet. Pay attention to a couple little things here. Notice the difference in tone. So this is nice and orange down here. These areas have a bluish hue. We would call that a cool tone. And that's created because the sun is coming in from the other direction. Whenever you're on the shadow side of an object, you're going to get blue tones. That's just, that's just the way the colors work. And when the sun is hitting an object, you generally will get the warm tone. So here you're getting the warm tones on the water. The duck is a silhouette, essentially. And you've got just these hints of blue tones where that droplet is and where that wake is. Because again, it's, it's a little bit of a, a, a shadow there. And the potential I see, the detail that I see, the detail that I want to play up in this whole edit has nothing to do with the subject anymore. It's a valuable lesson, I think, as you grow in your journey. A lot of people watching YouTube videos, maybe first year, second year, trying to get some tips and suggestions. This is a suggestion I would take. 
it is not always going to be solely about the subject. I did a video a long time ago and it was specific to bird photography and it was about why birders make bad, it's a tough choice of words, sometimes aren't as good <laughs> at bird photography as photographers. And that's because birders are often chasing species. They, they become very focused on the subject. As you take a more artistic approach, sometimes the subject is only a part of the scene, a part of the composition. And watch how I illustrate that here. My edit becomes much different. I will tell you this. Um, and down in the comments, you can let me know how you feel about this next image. I think this is one of the best images I've taken this year. This is a different frame, but very similar. Notice the compositionally, I have removed a lot of the subject. Again, high resolution camera. I get to crop in a little bit. I'm now starting to realize I need to get to the left of this bird. So I'm tracking and trying to keep him over on the right side of frame, the right side of the frame. And as that wood duck is coming around, I'm going to focus in front because that's the area that was most appealing to me. Now I was able to crop in. I cut off the body. You could see that right away. A lot of people aren't going to be comfortable with that. I will tell you in this composition, I think it works rather well. Notice the leading line, this orange light that glows and curve in nature is beautiful. To me, there is something about curve and shape that just really, really, really works visually. And I want to play that up in this edit. So through some dodging and burning, a little bit of saturation, maybe adjusting hue just a hair, I'm going to play up this transition between the orange and the blue and this detail here, this wake, the curve of this wake is the detail that I wanted to accentuate. Now I get a bonus in this one because I also get this, this little soft curve of water on the bill with the same tones. I think this edit would have worked without that droplet. I think with the droplet, it makes it really special. I'll tell you this and down in the comments again, feel free to let me know. I can take, I can take your, your criticisms down in the comment as long as they're polite and respectful. I know this is not everybody's cup of tea. I think for me, this really works and I'm wondering, does it work for you? Do you see a little bit more of the artistic vision playing up the detail, kind of making the subject secondary? Do you understand the concept and does that work for you? Now playing up details, you can go a lot of different ways. I tried to show you some examples. I showed you some breaths, some drops of water. I remember uh, an image I posted a long time ago. It had an oyster catcher with a little feather falling from it. And the oyster catcher was a nice image, but you add that little, and maybe I'll flash it up here on the screen. You add that little feather dropping and it becomes really, really pretty to me. Um, you know, those subtle details, there's a lot of different ways to play it up. Sometimes it's lighting. Sometimes it's dodging and burning or brightening some areas of an image and darkening others. Sometimes it's composition. And in this one, I, I did a little bit of all of that. I changed the composition to accentuate the detail. I altered the hues just a hair, just enough to make them stand out. And then I played around with dodging and burning a little bit to darken the subject and minimize the subject and really make it about that shape. So does it work for you? And how can you use this in your photography? So I hope you like this quick video today. Did it make you think? You can let me know down in the comments. This one's part of my how to improve your photography series, but I also have a lot of other pay playlists. So check those out down at the bottom. I do gear reviews and I do some opinion pieces as well. So you can check out the playlists if those are more your style and what you're looking for on the channel. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. There's a bell down there for notifications. That'll let you know when I have a new video out. And as always, I appreciate your support on the channel and I hope we can continue to find inspiration and in wildlife together.